Thank you for tuning in to the best parenting show on the internet. Post Daily Dose. Hey, Facebook family, it's Christy Saul, the co-founder of the Post Institute, the leader of Parenting Inner Circle, and the uh, head parenting coach for the Post Institute, coming at you live. Hope everybody's doing well this Sunday. Um, I don't know, I took a day of rest yesterday, a much needed day of rest, me and Marley, uh, our 15 year old, we just chilled, chilled and did not, a whole lot of nothing, and it was much needed. And Today was an amazing day at church. Um, you know, I just want to say hi to Jill. Um, last week, Jill made a comment. I think it was Jill Dennis who said, um, you sure do get inspired after church. And I do. I mean, of course I do. Um, one, I absolutely love my church. Um, it's been a long time. Um, I've been going to this church now for, I guess it's been about four years wow um, it but it took it was a search you know it took a while for me to find a group of people that in worshiping um, they're just there's just this really great connection we have a really nice bond it's not a great big group hey Stephen how's it going how's the Netherlands great to hear from you and I see Mimi's watching and so yes when I when I come out of church I feel very inspired because I've just spent uh, let's see, we started at 11, we usually get out about one. So I have spent two hours being plugged in to love. Two hours, two straight hours being plugged in to love. And so yes, when I leave church, I feel very inspired. Um, I feel very um, poured into, you know, I get lots of hugs and I get to give lots of hugs. And, you know, people in my church who, you know, we know each other. Um, we know what we're going through and so you know when I give somebody a hug and I say take this with you it's like I know I won't see you until next Sunday and I want to pour into you because I know that you're walking through some stuff right now that's difficult and um, I'm here with you you know I'm, we're 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 plugged in to the greatest the greatest source of love ever together and so you know, as a person here on this earth, I want to do everything that I can in my heart, mind, and spirit to support and encourage people, you know, to celebrate with them. It's not all, you know, it's not all struggles and tragedies. Life is not all struggles and tragedies, but, you know, those struggles and tragedies certainly can, they can cause two things. We can either turn from our greatest source of love or we can just lean into it, you know, and that was actually part of our, our talk today at church was how so often, you know, using that term sin, so often when we sin, we turn from God out of shame. And it immediately made me think of how our children, how, and, and even ourselves, how we do that when we do these things, when we have these little secret things in our lives. Um, and that causes us to feel shamed and maybe they're not secrets maybe it's just something that causes us to feel that feeling of shame that we tend to do this right and we hide ourselves all we can see is ourselves all we can see is our saint our shame we can't see past ourselves to even be able to pour into others and to be able to receive what's being poured into us shame is very powerful um, it keeps us away from love and so um, and it just keeps us kind of chasing our tail into negativity um, in fact I think what I'll do I don't talk about the topic of shame very well probably because I'm just now moving out of it about two years of shifting out of shame you know um, just coping coping strategies that were not effective um, you know I have a rebellious nature so you know sometimes as adults we don't always do um, things that are 
reflective of our greatest, greater nature, our best selves. So with that said, I think what I want to do, because I know somebody who speaks beautifully about shame, Jeanette Yaffe. And so I'm going to put a link to a podcast that she did. I'll put a code in the uh, descriptor uh, of a podcast that she did helping us understand shame better because we can all learn and that our children really struggle with that. <sighs> They really struggle with it, and I think we really struggle with it as human beings, that we struggle with shame, and we've used shame as part of a parenting paradigm to try to correct behavior for a very long time, and honestly, it's just not very helpful. I mean, clearly, I'm, you know, sitting here talking with it in this manner, just really struggling on how to express the, I mean, really just the benefits is... Of, of not feeling shame and being able to really connect with love and to continue to strive to be in love is just absolutely amazing. And so that's really, you know, I've become much better versed at talking about that um, because I don't want to be walking in shame. I want to be walking in celebration, the celebration of love and the celebration of forgiveness and understanding and to be reaching higher and higher in terms of just being able to focus more and more on that instead of anger and bitterness, resentment, you know, um, those defaults, those defaults of shame, defaults of victimization, defaults of anger and bitterness and fear, they can just zap us from being our best selves. And so just to really try to pour into you, love, 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 love. What is your source? What's your source of love? What's your source of connection? How do you get filled? How do you squeeze your cup? How do you teach your kids? Because a lot of times we are, we're teaching our kids that love is conditional we, because we get angry and fearful, so we withdraw. And then our kids, all they feel is anger and fear. They don't feel love and support. And part of the learning process is guiding and to guide with love and support so that we can help, you know, help them steer clear of some of the things that we've had challenges with. And, you know, I'll just use the example. Addiction has really been on my heart since the new year, wanting to have an impact in my community with regards to addiction and parenting. And so, you know, addiction is so rooted in fear and shame. And it's just, it is literally a cat chasing its tail where you feel so ashamed that all you can do to escape the shame is to go use. And so with that, I, you know, I'm just really wanting us to focus on what it means to love our kids for the sake of loving them each day just to be able to stop for a minute in all of our efforts to teach and correct and you know we get so hijacked you know we see their survival we see how they live in survival mode where they they perceive everything as a threat but then we do crazy things like you know if i know that my child sees everything as a threat well i can't have all this anxious energy about the socks that are sitting in the living room you know, we get into, we get into all these little battles about things that, you know, in the grand scheme of things, how big of a deal is it? You know, we get super stressed out and overwhelmed thinking about, you know, how people are going to be judging us. And, you know, there just have to be times where, where we step back and just look at our children without so much fear and out without this teaching corrective eye and just love them you know remember remember their sweetness pour into their beautiful hearts and their curiosities and when we see them struggling to just stop for a minute and kind of twist our brain around what it is that they need if we can see them as struggling and know that that struggle means that they're wanting to make an effort. So if we just keep pounding them about how they're screwing up, of course they're going to just want to stay in their room. Of course they're not going to want to deal with us. Right? I mean, I, I know we have to teach them. We also have to have some understanding. And we can't get so 
caught up in just the nitpicky things, we have to be able to demonstrate unconditional love, at least moments, moments of unconditional love, moments where we can just look at them, you know, and see them and embrace them right where they're at. You know, and in that moment, it could be that you're embracing a 12 year old who sometimes is a two year old emotionally and thinks of himself as a 25 year old. And we just have to be able to stop and pause and pour love into that person and understand that they are, they're growing, they're learning. We have to, we have to be the model, right? So if we're flipping out <laughs> over something and, and I can't help but think, what was that? The football game with, I'm not a fan, you know, Brian's always talking about stuff like that, but uh, it was, I think it was two weekends ago, I think it was Oklahoma and Alabama and the coach threw his headset into a big tantrum, you know, he was really upset and it's interesting how, how we give certain people permission to express themselves and to have their feelings and then we we shame our children for having their own and so I just I don't know this message today is just really about slowing down a little bit connecting with your loving source whatever that is build your oxytocin get with people who who pour into you love and if you don't have that, then let's get that, you know. Um, I'm working towards um, creating some opportunities that, you know, maybe we can get some donations. Um, actually, I've got a couple of people who are sponsoring individuals in private coaching, which is really cool. Yeah, I had a family call me and ask to sponsor another family, so they're paying for this family's coaching. And so I'm looking, I'm, I'm beginning to open myself up to possibilities for offering like some free book studies, um, some scholarships, because, you know, the message of parenting our children from this place of love, we've really got to get it out there. You know, um, we have so many people who, you know, they're just, they're struggling, you know, parents who are scared and fearful and angry and worried and uh, at all different levels. And then, you know, from that place, we, you know, we're, I'm talking about, our own survival right we see how our kids view everything as a threat and they are plugged in at this level of survival and their amygdalas get hijacked and from that place they have these behavioral outbursts but what about us right how are we functioning in a more sophisticated version of the same thing there i got to it how is it that we are actually functioning the very same way our kids do just in a more sophisticated version right so maybe I don't throw quite the big tantrum you know but I'm sitting here watching this this college coach do it right um, we as adults how often are we throwing tantrums how often are we suppressing our own emotions how often are we functioning in addiction and shame and fear of judgment and fear that we're not measuring up and who who are we connected to and walking our lives out Who's pouring love into us? Who's helping us improve ourselves so that we can be leading our families in the way that we want to lead our families? So that we can be pouring into our families first and then our communities. So that's kind of like the big aha moment I'm having and the big questions that I'm asking myself and I'm asking you to ask yourself. And through that questioning, and that self-exploration, I'm hoping that we can grow. I'm hoping we can grow together. And so um, I want you guys to be looking for those opportunities. Hold me accountable a little bit. You know, ask me, hey, you know, have you got that, that free book study session ready for us yet? Um, because I want to start, uh, I want to start creating a model where you all can then be offering that to your friends, that you can have a a small study group in your community in your library or you know at your house or you know online with your friends you know you guys get in and do some group chats where you're talking about a different way of parenting a different a different paradigm and you've got resources to be able to walk that out together so that's my 2019 goal and I'm activating I'm activating today um, I've got a current round of book studies happening
I've got two spots that I'm going to give away. Um, we just started last week, so you're only one week behind. I can catch you up um, pretty easily. So if I've got if any anybody two people, um, the first two people who give me shoot me an email, um, I'll get you hooked up. It's on Thursdays. <laughs> I'm doing it. <laughs> so it's on Thursdays. Uh, I've got um, an availability at 10 a.m. Central Standard Time, and the other one is at 8 o'clock in the evening, Central Standard Time, Thursdays. We just finished week one, so I'm going to give two away to whoever emails me first. So it's Christy, K-R-I-S-T-I, at postinstitute.com, and I'll put that um, in, the, um, in the comments, too. So I'm going to get to make two new friends, and I can't wait, and hopefully um, we're going to grow together, and so we've got four currently in each of the sessions and I think adding just one more I can handle that emotionally and with my time so anyway amen amen I hope you guys have a fabulous week give those things some thought who's pouring into you um, how are you getting your cup filled how are we living in survival in a more sophisticated manner than our children maybe sometimes not so much more sophisticated and how can we learn to be the leaders that our families need and that our communities need? So much love to you all, and uh, I'll look for those two emails. Bye-bye.